Uh, what's on a rope rescuer's harness? Well, it depends um, what kind of rope rescuer you are um, and who you work for and what their mission profile is, et cetera, et cetera. It just goes on and on and on. Also, like whoever you work for, what kind of gear do they carry? What gear don't they carry? And what are you willing to augment with? What can you or what can't you? Out of the three harnesses uh, that I have, um, there are some things that I keep as consistent as possible. Um, every harness, I have my own pair of gloves. They aren't the same brand, but with every pair of gloves I have, I actually cut or get them with the thumb, the trigger finger, and the middle finger uh, cut out so that I have dexterity, but I can also operate moving ropes, like a belay line, or like I can repel and, and rope and glide through my, my gloved hand. Um, and I don't have to worry about taking gloves off to achieve like that finer dexterity when tying like specific types of knots. So uh, all my harnesses have gloves. Um, all my harnesses have a spare uh, oval non-locking carabiner, uh, specifically a, a lot um, just random changes of direction or redirects, um, and a whistle uh, for comms, for communications. So this one has a whistle on a lanyard. Every harness I have has a clip that I can put an Aztec to it if I want to. So, um, yeah, I can de detach it and move it to any set of harnesses I have uh, at will. Let's start with the fire-based uh, harness. Okay, it, it's a rope access style harness, so it has the sternal arrest point, it has a, a dorsal arrest point, uh, connection point low on the back, and it has the two side positioning rings. There's not a lot of stuff I have hanging off this because, uh, because of our, our, our mission set. Like, we not only do rope rescue, but we also do confined space rescue as well. So that, I don't want to have a whole lot dangling off my harness, but I do want to have some things that will make my life easier for like doing on rope work, but I want to store them on my harness in a way that like they don't hang, like uh, lanyards, webbing, like excess amount of carabiners. And so, what I often to do is just use a utility pouch that I can rapidly just rip off the side of my harness and it has most things that I would need to do on rope in a pinch. So what are those things? Well, I have uh, a pair HMS carabiner uh, as well as a second one inside, uh, a standard 8mm sewn bound loop prusik and a 8mm VT prusik, as well as a Dyneema sling uh, for just random, I can just uh, get patients up and suck them into the system. Also, some sort of cutting tool. So here, it's just a knife. What else is in here? Well, it's my entire on-rope work kit. So I wanted something light um, that was similar to stuff we carry already in our in our bigger kits. So we carry Maestro's IDs, MPDs. I'm gonna carry the rig in my, my own bag because um, it's as small as I can get it, but similar enough to some of the things that we already use. Uh, ID is a little bit bigger, doesn't fit in this pouch as well, so I have my descender. And then my ascending kit, basically, uh, which doubles as a couple different things. So my ascending kit, I want something that's uh, streamlined, so this is pretty like the lightest, smallest thing you can get for a foot cord or foot loop. Uh, the handle of the center is on a ring. Uh, this is kind of like your key set for like vehicle extrication or whatever. It's like multi-functional. So I can store my roll clip on here for if I want to do like three to one assist uh, on the RAD system, I can do that quickly. Um, and then the cow's tail is a progress adjust to me. Uh, but if I'm not using it as a cow's tail, I can just rotate the ascender over and now I have that carabiner in and it's an actual progress adjust lanyard that I can uh, do other pickoffs with, backup lines, etc. We uh, incorporate another ring to give us more options on the pelvic uh, section um, and a chest ascender of some type. So I can do the frog method as well. Uh, let's see, anything else on the fire based harness or radio holster on the back is always a good idea. Um, okay, so this is kind of bulky and we, uh, we can also interface with um, county search and rescue that does primarily the mountain style mountain rescue. Um, so this harness doesn't really work if I have to walk significant distances. Um, it's bigger, it's bulkier, it's, there's more weight to it. Um, so if I'm going to do any kind of interface with mountain rescue, maybe I just ditch this uh, fire-based industrial style harness and go with the 
something more adaptable. So just um, your climbing style seat harness that has the belay loop, because I can actually walk and hike around with this and it's a little bit more comfortable. It's lighter weight. I don't have to have it in a full body configuration if I don't want to. That's what the separate chest component is for. So if I wanted to do something more uh, supportive, like on rope, I can do that. And it has its own little chest ascender in there. So I can do the same things I can do with that harness, um, but it's an option. So I can incorporate this or not. A dual lanyard um, for just attaching yourself in or hooking somebody else up. Multi-purpose, it just lives there. Um, and then uh, one of the things I added, because uh, again, I don't want to store a lot of stuff on my harness, especially cordage and webbing that uh, can kind of get snagged and caught on stuff. People tend to trip on that stuff. It tends to collect dirt and it just hangs them up. So I just, I'll just keep some webbing in my radio pouch. Really, like, this is for hitching around a litter rail for, like, your low angle um, litter tenders. Because uh, if you have it always with you, um, that's primarily what it's for. Like, when you really need it, you really need it. And you can also build anchors with it. So that just lives in my harness. Um, I have a handle to sender. Um, this isn't really for ascending, but it's for being able to grip a rope and haul. Uh, because when we go out in these interface environments, sometimes we, we don't have the luxury of toting around a really heavy multi-pod frame like the Vortex. Um, and sometimes if we have to do some sort of haul system, well, we don't have a high directional. It could happen. Um, and so trying to haul with just like a gloved hand uh, over like an edge that isn't elevated or through a pulley, um, having that handle, that grip handle to, to help haul um, is key. So have that. Also, your knife. Um, trauma shears work better, but it's okay. Oh, okay. On the back of this harness, like a little another pouch here, a folding saw. This comes in handy when you want to cut weeds, branches, twigs, etc. out of the way when you're trying to build anchor systems. And then the pouch itself, it's, the, it's basically the same kind of ascending setup with the cow's. Um, the cow's tail's not in here because the cow's tail is going to be here if I decide to use it. So uh, right here, it's just the, the, foot, the foot loop and the uh, handle to sender. And then a Purcell with two carabiners for uh, some sort of adjustable lanyard or pickoff application. So um, most things I need to do uh, are already on the, the harness and they aren't dang, the components and pieces of equipment are not dangling around. So what, that's what I like about that. So um, why I use these slings is if I want to start hiking, I just take this and wrap it around myself. And depending on what I'm doing, if I'm doing rigging work, I can keep this with me. But the second I need to go on rope or I'm like a rescuer, uh, instead of having all this stuff on my harness, I can just take this off my shoulder and leave it somewhere and just say, okay, I'm, I'm focused on streamlined uh, on rope work. Um, but the stuff that I carry, if I'm doing some sort of backcountry interface or anything like that, is all the things that I would need possibly to rig some sort of system up, whether that's a, a lowering system or a raising system. Um, and you're not going to find any of this stuff in the, the kits that we carry. The bags that we carry are pretty heavy uh, and they include some rope too. Um, so if I had to go some sort of distance or climb, I would just take this with me, grab just a standalone rope pack and put that on my back and I'm pretty much self-sufficient for those type of interfaces. Let's go over to the sling for uh, the Firebase industrial side. And you try to match it up with kind of what we have. Um, just a bunch of high strength, lightweight carabiners um, and additional things that we already have that can complement. So I can also grab this, go somewhere and not have to worry about uh, going back for gear or sending a runner to get more stuff. Okay, similar to like the Firebase um, industrial style thing, but this is more specific for like somebody who's gonna do like a rope, ac rope access level one, like a sprout level one. So um, the descender, the multi-purpose device is the clutch. Uh, really for rope access, I don't think you can get a better device. Granted, it's heavy I'm not gonna, and it's big. So I'm not gonna carry this on a side pouch anywhere like I am with a fire. Um, it's too heavy, it's impractical for me to use uh, out in the backcountry, but it's really the best device for rope access work. 
The ascending kit is basically the same as all the others, but I also have uh, the horizontal A climbing kit or even vertical A climbing kit. So, uh, so what do these things do and how do we uh, use them for multi-purpose applications? Um, all my cows tails lanyards, I want to have them uh, dynamic uh, rope and I want to have them uh, of sufficient strength uh, to kind of comply with those ocean ANSI regulations and standards. So let's lay this on the ground and look at what an aid climbing kit would look like in conjunction with my ascending kit. So this would go to the harness on the pelvic crane. This is like the central like primary connection. Um, and then we have one foot loop and a lanyard for one anchor center. And then the existing ascending kit is the other one. And that's why we have these rings on here. So I, I basically just use that carabiner and it becomes a lanyard with another foot stirrup. And so now you can do either uh, horizontal egg climbing or vertical egg climbing with one, two, three actual bomber uh, connection points from end to end. Um, because when you progress, you take one off, you're on two, like, and vice versa. ASAPs are some sort of mobile fall arrest device. Some people interchange them. I like to have the same, but it's slightly different. One of them has the access for doing uh, two-person loads, so rescuing. The other one is just a regular 40. You can use a 20 as well, uh, but they're stowed on a little tether line, so they're out of the way and they're pre-connected onto the sternal line. So what kind of uh, harness do you get, are you gonna get? It depends on what kind of rope rescuer you are, uh, where you foresee yourself operating, uh, trying to match the complement of gear you have to the stuff that your team or people that you work with use. Um, trying to play this balance of not carrying too much, but not too little either. Um, and then constantly trying to tweak it. So, uh, yeah, there you go.